Battlefield 1 has officially been announced, the trailers have been released and we've seen some gameplay. I am extremely hyped from what I've seen from this game so far, incredibly impressed and there are loads of things that I'm really really looking forward to playing when the game does hit open beta. As you probably already know if you are subscribed to this channel already, tank gameplay is the cornerstone of a lot of the video footage that I was putting out midway through last year. Admittedly over the past year I have focused a little more on the attack helicopter and the top play series, however tank gameplay is something quite close to my heart and something that will definitely come back to feature on this channel a lot alongside other things regarding Battlefield 1. The purpose of this video is to have a quick look at the tanks themselves, although I actually haven't played Battlefield 1, I didn't go to EA Play, I did have a good opportunity at watching all the footage that was sent out, I did watch the live stream and I have spoken to a few people about how the tanks actually handle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the tanks in a bit more detail, have a discussion about what we can expect from them and set the foundations for a couple of techniques that might prove to be invaluable when this game does come out. Let's start by taking a quick look at the types of tanks that you can expect to see when you're waiting to spawn in in the menus. You're going to be looking at a screen similar to the one that you can see in the background. Now I couldn't find, obviously not playing the game myself, a more accurate screen than this and the people that I'm using the footage from will be linked down below in the description and on screen. I do not want to get in any trouble from taking other people's footage. Now it seems to me as though you'll be able to spawn in either a light, medium or heavy tank. As we can see on screen now, the light tank will be on the one on the right hand side, the heavy tank is in the middle, and you're going to have a land ship on the left hand side. That probably indicates a medium tank holding three people. The light tank's probably going to hold one person, possibly two in some instances, although I think this one probably relates to the Renault FT-17, a tank that I'll show you on screen now. Now this tank is a small tank, it's a fairly quick tank, and as you can see with some gameplay again in the background, both taken from the stream and from some fellow YouTubers, it shows a fairly quick tank. It's going to get across the battlefield. It's going to be something equivalent to the AA gun or LAV in Battlefield 4, although not on that scale, but something of that speed that is going to be that much quicker than every other vehicle on the ground at the time. Taking a quick look at some gameplay, you can see this thing does move around fairly fast. And with the options that you can see, you're going to have this cannon that fires five shells, as with most of the other tanks, and then you have to reload all five at once. It's a fairly quick process. It's quite similar to Battlefield 4, as far as I'm aware. It's not unlimited like BF3, so you do have to reload and think about your ammo count as you go into engagements. The brilliant thing for me, though, with looking at this gameplay, and it's the same with Battlefield 4, the turret speed is really fast. This means you can react to any sort of infantry that might be trying to throw a sneaky grenade, something like that, trying to flank you, getting those tracks immobilized so they can take you down. This is a massive, massive point for tanking. It is going to mean that you can stay alive fairly easily on your own. If your aim is up to scratch and you're careful with your ammo, you're not going to have too much trouble taking flags on your own. The biggest problem for this vehicle, in my opinion, is when you come up against a heavy tank or a land ship, one of the medium tanks, and you are struggling to take them down because of the amount of people they have inside. They can jump out and also have a go at you. I'm guessing some of the larger vehicles such as the Zeppelin or the airship when they come in to change the game they could possibly do some serious damage to you. I'm not too sure about the planes whether they can drop any bombs on you but I think these smaller light tanks are going to be the key to some nice kill streaks on this game and you can be sure to see me on there when I'm just gaming on my own picking up some nice streaks that will be a certainty. As for the land ships, we were looking at a British Mark IV or Mark V tank. There were several different variations brought in throughout World War One. However, if we are to take a closer look at this tank, we can see that one, it's referred to as a land ship, and two, it is carrying three people at a time. The main driver is at the front. He's going to be operating his cannon at the front. He's in charge of the vehicle, and the viewpoint is going to be similar to that of an Amtrak in BF4. Again, you have third-person mode. This will be really, really influential, as you need to keep it a view on your surroundings and you can help your gunners out on either side giving them information assuming you are on comms. With gunner 2 and 3 they're going to operate a gun that has obviously no thermal because of the time period but they're going to be really useful at picking out infantry on your flanks and making sure that you can stay alive and protect those incredibly important tracks so you can stay mobile and keep on moving and picking up kills. It seems to me as though it is a teamwork game when you get into one of these landships. You're three people, usually you can find a couple of people to play with, pick up a landship, 
you're in a squad and you get out there on the battlefield and cause absolute mayhem. Having two gunners now instead of one is going to be really, really good fun. And I think it will be a situation where the gunner is actually more influential than the tanker in a lot of engagements as they have less to think about, but they also have a very effective gun to use. Finally, we have the massive heavy tanks the fridge freezers as i'm going to refer to them for this game's lifespan they are absolutely huge if we're looking at it from a realistic historical point of view they are known as the a7vs a german tank however i think we'll be able to get them on both sides of the battlefield as is the case with most of the tanks they're not massively accurate with who they're going to give them to which faction they're going to give them to however in the war the central powers did steal a couple of the the british tanks and a couple of the french tanks so they did have access to them as well and i think that's the way they're going to go about it as i mentioned in a previous video now it's quite interesting to see the amount of people that you can carry in this heavy tank using a bit of Gameplay from Star Snipe, again linked down in the description. He went on a fairly nice kill streak just on the in the actual event, I think a 33 to 0, which isn't too bad, assuming as though you don't know the map, you don't know the people you're playing against. Obviously, they don't really have a clue what they're doing either. But it's a it's a new game. So seeing that kill streak straight away screams one thing out to me. It is indeed possible to go on a massive kill streak on this game, and it doesn't seem to be too tricky at all. We are going to see a lot of gameplay where people are going flawless. We're going to see a lot of very influential tanks on the battlefield, and I think having a tanker that knows what he's doing will possibly win you the game. Now, with the classes for tanking, you are going to spawn in as a tanker. Now, everybody on the battlefield has the option to take an anti-tank grenade. These things will be horrible if you're on a kill streak because I guarantee squads will spawn just like javelins on Battlefield 4 and try and take you out. However, as a tanker, you will be equipped with a repair tool, which is in the form of a hammer. This loadout kit can be customized, but will change depending on what sort of tank you spawn in, a light, a medium, or a heavy tank. You also can passively repair your own vehicle. You'll see that a lot through this video and through any of the live streams that you did watch or any of the other videos you see on YouTube. You can tap the X button on your keyboard. You have to be fairly still as far as I'm aware. You can't actually be moving or engaging another tank, but that regenerates your health. So you're going to be gaining a bit of health back each time you do this. It means that you can go behind cover and you don't actually have to bail out of your tank to repair. As for effectiveness of the different tanks, I am really torn between all three of them. I think the small tank or the light tank looks superb fun from a single player point of view. You're going to be a, do a lot of damage. You're going to get around the battlefield quickly. It's going to be awesome. For a kill streak point of view, I think the really heavy tank is going to be where it's at. But it really does depend what sort of map you're playing. We were looking at St. Quentin's Scar on the live stream in those in the three games that we saw on the live stream however it could be a completely different kettle of fish when we're looking at some maybe larger maps with bigger distances and long large scale battles Something I'm really looking forward to seeing in this game is how the tank's functionality and mobility is affected by incoming projectiles and grenades. I think that it will be fairly similar to BF4 with the rear shots and things like that. However, I imagine the armor plating will offer a significant reduction in the amount of damage you take from the said projectile or grenade. It will be interesting to see how weak the actual tracks are on the tank because it's my belief that if a grenade hits the track or a projectile of some sort hits the track, then it will fall off and you'll become immobilized. However, it is very similar in my eyes to BF4, where if you're hit in the back, you are completely immobilized. Obviously, APS offers you a way out of that, and as far as I'm aware, there's nothing similar to that in BF1. But with the repair tool mechanic and the amount of repairs that you can receive off, off friendlies, depending whether that's restricted or not, we will see. I think that it will be nice for the tanker to know that there is always a way out of a situation like that when you are immobilized. That brings on the main point though that I take from this video, the small tanks, the lighter tanks are going to be a lot more effective at getting away from these sort of threats. The heavy tanks are going to be, they're going to be giant sitting ducks and the, the size of the tank is going to help it in one way because you can be more effective, you've got more people, more weapons on board, more guns, however you are going to be a massive target for infantry and if you do unfortunately get a track disabled or you are disabled in whatever way that is you will just get taken down and there won't be too much you can do about that so it'll be interesting to see when we get our hands on some extended gameplay in the form of the beta we'll be able to work out what the best way to get out of those situations or avoid them altogether are. Oh. If there's anything you want to know about the tanks, I will be sure to find it out for you. Please leave it down in the comments below. Leave a like if you did enjoy and leave anything else that you've picked up on regarding the tanks so people can have a read and hopefully it answers some questions if you have any. Thanks again for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next episode.